and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence, and this week we have our guest back again. Say hello. Hi. It's Nathan Payne, and we are talking about two more Christmas-themed horror movies, Black Christmas and Krampus. So how are you, Nate? I'm fantastic. I really enjoyed watching both of these movies. Yeah, me too. And I feel like these are going to be... I, I have already seen Krampus, but these are both going to be in my yearly repertoire. Of had you not Christmas. seen Black not Christmas seen before? Black Christmas. Oh my God. And I freaking loved it. Mm-hmm. So, a little history about Black Christmas. This came out in 1974, and they call it uh, definitely considered to be an influence for the movie Halloween. Mm-hmm. And I completely agree. It's got a, only a 67% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know. Really? Who didn't like it? Yeah. But it I'm surprised to be by that. Yeah, the 1974 also happens to be the release year of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, wow. That's... that's. It was a good year. Yeah. <laughs> this movie had a budget of 620000 It ended up making $4 million at the box office. It was written by Ray Moore and it... Roy Moore. And it's actually based on the urban legend about the babysitter being home and, you know... With, the the famous urban the legend. phone calls coming, from, coming from, inside from inside the house, house. Yes. which is even a line in the movie. It is, and it's perfect. <laughs> and so when I heard that, I'm like, wait a minute, which came first? But the urban legend did come first. Um, but it's a perfect setup. Um, Olivia Hussey, one of the actresses, um, she played Juliet in mm-hmm. um, Romeo and Juliet, the the one that had just come out previous to this, and. She actually took this role because a psychic told her to. Really? Yeah. Wow. Which is interesting. And then also, you know, the den mother. That mm. part was offered to Betty Davis and she turned it down. Can you imagine Betty that Davis? That would have been amazing. I love Mrs. Mack. She's, She's the best. probably my favorite. Uh, do you know who the director was? No. Well, it was directed by Bob Clark, who also directed A Christmas Story. Oh, what? That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even better. Yeah, he's done like the two quintessential Christmas movies of mine. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. I will say um watching this again was really amazing because I hadn't seen it in uh, several years. I did first see it probably like 3 or 4 years ago, so it hasn't been that long, but it I it's easy to forget how masterful this movie is. Oh um, my gosh. I love at the beginning like when the killer they show from first person so much of what he does is shown from first person, and I really thought that was cool. And you could definitely see how it would have influenced Halloween, which I love. Yes. Um, and then also I have to give a shout out because both Olivia Hussey and Margot Kidder are two of my like very oh. favorite actors from that time. Yes. And so I love that they're both in this movie. That's and Margot funny. Kidder's character is my favorite. She's the best. <laughs> She's so hilarious. And she, you know, um, what is what is her name now? Gilda Radner, I guess, was originally in that role and had to drop out. Wow. And they got Margot Kidder. She would have been great too. She but would've. I love Margot. But and but and people were telling Margot Kidder, this isn't like gonna be great for your image because this isn't your type of role, but she nailed it. It's 100% her kind of yeah, role. At least it, it seems Became, like it. Or, yeah. <laughs> um, I, of course, love and know Margot Kidder originally from Superman, mm-hmm. for me. And the quintessential scene, when I knew I was straight, <laughs> was <laughs> when they're on the rooftop and she's in that flowy dress and mm-hmm. he is sitting there and he they're doing the interview or whatever. Yes. And he gives that look. Oh my God. <laughs> Christopher Reeves was one of my first crushes, as was uh, Magnum P.I. <laughs> Very different, but... <laughs> That's amazing. Like, I was three, and I was like, okay, I like men. <laughs> That's really funny. Margot Kidder, to me, always will be Kathy Lutz from Amityville Horror. <laughs> like, that's what I think of when I think of her. Someday we should totally do a podcast on those movies, because <laughs> yes. those are some of my favorites, yes. too. <laughs> so, prank phone calls. Have you, in real life, received any... <laughs> that, that were creepy like this or I actually have a really good story about oh. that. Um when I was in well this is this reflects maybe a little poorly on me as a child. <laughs> so when I was in like I think 5th grade, um the town I lived in had just had a, like a major crime done at this local truck stop that had been held up and you know as a kid we all like all the kids in town it was just a tiny town we had 20 kids in our class and they were you know, we were all like, we have to look out for the criminals and everything. And then I got a f- prank phone call where somebody played a scene from some movie 
of somebody getting like murdered. Oh my gosh. And so we called the police. It was just me and my friend Peter like at my house, yeah. you know, little kids. We called the police <laughs> and they came over and listened to it and they were like, I'm pretty sure this is just from a movie and people are playing jokes on you. And then we found out who it was and I like, I called their mom and was like, I called the police. Oh my gosh. And it was this really ridiculous... Yeah, so yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, you know, days before caller ID, you could do prank phone calls. Mm-hmm. And my friends and I, we were, this also reflects badly on me. We would call people and say we're Dairy Queen and like <laughs> get, we were saying we're doing a, a survey on their favorite Blizzard flavor. It was like totally not vicious, but at the same time, it's really dumb. That feels like a very like 1980s <laughs> yeah. kid thing to do. That's I know when I was a kid, blizzard. we would do that. And then when everybody figured out what Star 69 was and <laughs> yeah, we'd get the calls back. back. Oh, yep. <laughs> it was a different time. But yeah, the, the calls in this movie are genuinely creepy. Yes. And uh, spoiler alert, we never find out the intention or even who the person is. Yeah. And so it makes it even more disturbing because it's like uh, is it a prank are they really crazy probably right have you ever seen the remake no (laughs) it's bad um well i it gets more hate than i think it deserves but it is it's a horrible remake but there are a lot of good things about it but don't expect anywhere near the same it's not even the same story okay they uh they use the c word Pretty soon in the movie. They do, on the phone, and it was used very effectively to make you feel really gross, which was how I felt, so. And I, this this whole setup with the sorority house, I think is a perfect setup, and it's Christmas, and there's going to be some people going home, and you don't know when, Mm -hmm. so if people are missing, it's like, oh, they must have left early, or whatever. It's just perfect. Yeah, it takes them a while to figure out that there's really anything truly happening and i really liked how they showed that the killer was in the house like immediately yes you know so we as an audience are completely aware that there's this murderous psychopath up in the attic for the entire movie and they are all kind of slowly (laughs) figuring this out and like learning across the whole plot and um yeah (laughs) it really got under my skin a lot of times the uh, one of the one of the first deaths is a dry cleaning bag, and they always say, um, you know, those plastic bags are a hazard, and they prove it in this movie. Yes, um, that was really disturbing. And I also wrote that the dead mother, she's an alcoholic, but in I, a lovable way. I wrote, Mrs. Mac is my spirit animal, oh, nice. <laughs> and um, I love. That even though the movie has this really dark and gritty tone, um, and it's just like bleak a lot of the time, but they sprinkle in humor, and the humor that is there is really funny. Mrs. Mack and um, Margot Kidder's character, I can't remember her name, both of them really add a lot. And I like that scene with Mrs. Mack when Claire's dad comes looking for his daughter, who is missing. She's the one that got killed by the dry dryer bag yes when he's looking for her and the dead mother is constantly like hiding the posters (laughs) and (laughs) she's like wasted trying to seem sober (laughs) and no this is a good place to live it's been fine yeah i I think this must be the father that gets hit with a snowball yes it's it's like sad but um i wrote the his glasses fall off and i was saying that that is real because if I lost my glasses in a zombie apocalypse, like, I would be done for. <laughs> like, there would be, I would be eaten. Because I can't see anything without my glasses. How are you without your glasses? I used to be all right. I'm still okay. Like, I can go without them. But I have to squint. And I've definitely gotten to the point where if I don't bring them with to, like, a show at the theater, oh. I squint too much and I get headaches. Oh, but okay. otherwise, I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> so I, you know, and it, it's almost like the Thelma thing in Scooby-Doo. It's like, she's looking for oh, yeah. glasses, but but no, that would be me. So. That's that's my mom, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the Mar- Margot Kidder is giving the kids alcohol. Alcohol, yep, I wrote that. I love when Margot Kidder got that kid drunk at the oh Christmas party with, like, the miserable friend who's pretending to be Santa. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the first like third of this movie especially it's so good at setting everything up and then they get that phone call which is the infamous line billy what your mother and i must know is what have you done with the baby where's agnes 
Like that, I feel like, is oh, yeah. sort of the quintessential one from the movie. And it's just disturbing to me how all these people are going missing and these phone calls keep happening and the police kind of are just like, you know, that's probably just someone playing a joke on you. That yeah. one police officer in particular. Right. Uh, like when Margot Kidder, he asks her for the phone number to the sorority and she tells him oh, fellatio yeah. 20880 <laughs> or whatever. Exchange. <laughs> Yes. I noticed, I knew it was shot in Canada as soon as um, the boyfriend said out yep. instead of out. <laughs> yes. I want to take you out. I noticed yeah. that too. <laughs> and my, um, we always say our favorite thing is Nickelback says rhymes sorry with story. And so that's very Canadian. It's like sorry and story because it's just a Canadian thing. And hey, I, we've got Minnesota uh, dialect. But, Minnesota. You know, yeah, Minnesota. <laughs> um, the, the piano dude. So he's a perfect red herring because he's so dramatic. Oh my God, he is so dramatic when, when he's doing his audition and he's yes. just like drenched in sweat and just like crazily playing this song. Um, And then later when he like smashes the piano. Yeah, mm. he, he's a very good red herring. And even... Uh, when we get to talking about the ending, I have a question about that okay. that I think will be interesting. But yeah, I wrote that too. There's lots of like suspects and red herrings. And um, even I felt like even briefly at the beginning when she went to see Chris playing hockey, uh, um, Claire's boyfriend, yeah. I was like, oh, maybe it's him. Yeah. <laughs> Now, someone missing is the worst feeling because it's yeah. the not knowing. Like, if they're, if they left by their own accord, if they've been kidnapped, if they're injured, mm -hmm. if it's a misunderstanding. So, I think that's always a great setup. And, you know, for the, for the people not knowing what happened to this person. Mm -hmm. And they, I think they handled it really well and it felt real. Yeah, when the high school girl went missing and oh, they had the yeah. whole search party out, it really struck me that this movie, you can tell it's from before when slasher movies were particularly popular because they take it, every, so they take it seriously and they care about the victims. Like yeah. people are crying about Claire like well after she's been missing and still talking about her. And I know in your fairly standard slasher, they just kind of move on. Move on and yeah. And, yeah, I, I really love that. <laughs> um, now, the next person is killed by a hook. Is that? That's right. Who is it? Is it? Um, it's Mrs. Mack yeah, yes. up in the thing when she's yelling for the cat. Claude, yes. Claude, Claude. <laughs> yeah. I love that though. She's, she died drunk. She was happy. Oh yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> sure she was fine. Oh, and then they do, speaking of this, looking through the park and looking for the girl, not knowing what they saw, they never show what they mm -hmm. saw, but they show people's reactions. That's so powerful. Yeah. And the that. mother, uh, just like the tension that she's experiencing oh. and then, ugh. Um, yeah, yeah, during that part, I did notice that the fact that this movie takes place on Christmas is, feels to me almost like an afterthought a lot of the time, but then when you kind of put it in context with the time, Christmas is supposed to be a time of, you know, love and family and caring and yeah. all that stuff. But then like everything about this particular Christmas is horrible across the board and not right. just because of this murderer, like... There's just a whole lot going wrong for these right? people. And and then, too, the Christmas setup is perfect because, oh, did Mrs. Mac leave Right, and all that stuff. And yep. maybe she's not really murdered or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the hockey player wears that extravagant fur coat. Did you notice <laughs> yes. that? Yes, yes, I love it. It's like, wow. He's so fancy. He is. <laughs> did you think that the police chief looks like an older Zac Efron? <laughs> That's what I noticed. I could totally see that. Um, <laughs> you know that that's the dude from... It's John Saxon. From He's the dad in Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm. It took me forever to okay. figure that out, too, because I was like, I know I know him, but I know. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street I actually got into really late in the game. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, another part. So, after... I Yes. When Mrs. Mack got killed, I wrote down that her death in particular felt like a fairly like clever, violent slasher movie kill. Because there aren't a lot of kills in the movie, but when they happen, they're very effective. Yeah. Um, and that was, I feel like, kind of the f only one in the movie where it was like particularly gruesome. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then immediately after that, he has a huge tantrum in the attic and it's again in first person and he's freaking out and you see Claire's body still oh, in the chair and he's like knocking chair, stuff yeah. over that tantrum was chilling yeah and I used to have like nightmares and things about 
like looking in through a window and seeing somebody just like thrashing around and breaking stuff and I don't know that imagery in my mind has always really freaked me out that is creepy um and then immediately after that they get yet another phone call and it's the one where they're like squealing like a pig and it's just and there were did it seem it really felt to me a lot of times during the phone calls that there were more than one voice yeah. Like, like at the same time. Well, it seemed, yeah. A few did. times. And yeah. I was wondering if that was on purpose or if they're, like, if they did it to throw us off or if there's supposed to be something else going on. I, I, in the remake, the story is focused on the people. And I, I will never take what happens in the remake as any kind of, like, it doesn't mean anything for this yeah. movie. But in that movie, there actually are two killers. Oh, okay. Because um, Agnes is real. It's terrible. Oh, um, mm. I, I think I read something about that actor and doing different voices. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's almost like a split personality kind of Oh, thing, yeah. But, but I don't know. But I see what you mean. Like, it sounded like... There were a few times where I felt like the voices were overlapped. And I wasn't yeah, sure yeah. if it was, like, on purpose or just something that, you know, 70s yeah. editing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> It was probably purposely to throw us off. Yes. How to trace a call back then was so complicated. People take it for granted that we can just, like, look who's calling us now. Yes. And back then, I mean, it, it was... <laughs> see, the guy was literally at the phone Like, company. running around the phone. Yep, and they had to keep him on the line. And, yeah, nowadays, if you call 911 for your phone, even if you don't say anything, the cops will show up yeah. at your house. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, there were a lot of things that were like, this movie takes place in a different time. Yes. Like the search party guys with the shotgun oh, wandering around. Yeah. Or the the man in the that was in the police station with his shotgun and he had just chased one of the cops like off his property and the cop was ashamed. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he was like, I'll fill your ass with buckshot. <laughs> it cracked me up. No, um, I think Marco Kidder's death is next. And she gets killed with a unicorn, right? The glass unicorn. Oh. Yeah. That was one of my... Okay, so again, bringing back the remake just because it's ridiculous and I can... Like, the tone of it is completely different. One of my favorite things about the remake, though, is it does give that (laughs) unicorn a... um, Like, a cameo. At one point, this weird girl that lives with them gives it to sort of the Marco Kidder equivalent character. And she's like, I got you this because I know you're really into, like, the Bible and stuff. (laughs) What? That's great. <laughs> I loved it. It made me, yes, it was wonderful. That's funny. I think they're describing the the piano player boyfriend, but there was a line saying, he's an artist. Oh, God, yes. He's <laughs> he's very high strung. He's an artist. It was very dramatic, <laughs> and I just loved it. He's a douchebag, by the way. Yes, he really is. Um, And again, that was another thing. The themes in this movie are, like, mature. Yeah. And... Especially for the time, like, I can only imagine what it must have been like to watch this movie. They're dealing with themes about, like, abortion and, you know, women's liberation and all these different things. It's not just like, oh, we're college sorority girls and all we care about is this. It's, like, real stuff. Right, right. There's, the movie is very grounded in reality and that was something I loved. Um, It's a little... On the slow side, I think, for a lot of modern audiences, it really depends. Like, I'm really into the slow burn movies, but even, there were a few times in this movie where I was like, okay, maybe one fewer phone call or Uh, a little less time running around the phone company. But again, for its time especially, I think it really, like, blazed the trail. Yeah. Um, So it's hard, because yes, it's slow for modern audiences, but it's still a masterpiece, it as is, far as yeah. I'm concerned. Now, would you go upstairs for your roommates? Nope. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on which one. <laughs> no. I would for my dog, though. <laughs> I mean, at this, at this point, no. I mean, no. There's a killer. Um, if someone's yelling for help, I'm going to go get help. Probably. Yeah, at this point. Well, and they call her, and they're like, go outside. Yeah. Get outside. He's in the house. And she's like, I'm going to go upstairs. Which, uh, I guess I could give her props for being more brave than I would uh. be, but... Yeah. It's it's crazy. Oh, the eyeball through the crack in the door. That now is the scariest thing in the world. That's my <laughs> terror. Like, I always imagine, like, what if you looked up in the ceiling and, like, there was a little piece and, like, you saw an and eyeball. And someone was looking, yeah. like, like the ceiling cat? Yes. <laughs> so, that was, was terrifying. 
And then it it was it didn't end up being Peter. I mean, because we think it's this guy, but it's not. And it's so good because now you're set on edge, and it would have been perfect setup for a sequel. But right, course, and and we know that it's not Peter. But you do wonder if maybe he's also lost it. So you're like, yeah. you know, he hasn't killed yet. From what we've seen, but it, you do wonder if he's going to separately also be an issue. Um, and that scene in the basement, which to me, the first time I saw it, I was like, my heart was pounding. I was really into it. And when he does show up, and then in the next scene where you see his fate, I wondered if, because they don't show what happens. Right. So I wonder if he attacked her or if she was just so frantic with terror and not trusting him or what happened. And and we don't know. And there's some ambiguity in this movie. That... Yeah. It's so good. Yes. If you haven't seen Black Christmas, rush out and watch it. It's on Shutter streaming right now. Mm -hmm. And you own a copy, I assume. Yes. There, um, I actually... There are a couple different versions out. I have an older one, but there's a newer version by Scream Factory that has a lot of really cool interviews and things. I don't have it yet, but okay. maybe one day. Okay, nice. <laughs> um, oh, did you notice? So toward the beginning, or I mean toward the end, when Lieutenant Fuller is calling, it's before he finds out that the voices are coming from inside the house, uh, but while they're still doing the phone tapping, you can see Billy's shadow like skulking around behind them. I didn't, I never had noticed it before, but what? the two, so Olivia Hussey's sitting there and then Phyllis, who is like the barb of this movie, yeah. <laughs> um, they're sitting there on the phone with him and yeah, behind them, there's shadows, there's a shadow of a man like oh kind of gosh. stalking them. That was spooky. That's cool. Yeah, there were a lot of little things in this that I didn't notice before. Um, I, I can't wait to rewatch it now. Yeah. Oh, and then at the end when the killer is still in the house, the bodies are still in the attic, uh, they leave Jess sleeping on a bed and everyone leaves and that's, you know, it, yeah. it's, we have no idea. Oh. And it was so effective. It's so good. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the most perfect sort of suspense Christmas movies. I Absolutely. did give it, I gave it 11 Pipers Piping because it might be a little slow moving for certain oh, okay. audiences. For me personally, I would probably give it a 12. Okay. <laughs> I I am going to that 12. I'm giving it a 12. Drummer's drumming. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> because I I really was blown away by this movie. I think it's a perfect setup. It it leaves you hanging and and also, you know, we know what I kind of love. I said it's perfect for a sequel, but I kind of love that there's not a million sequels because yeah. Sometimes it's best to be left alone. Yeah, it, it is really kind of the perfect campfire Christmas story. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, next up, this is a movie that came out in 2015, and we saw it in the theater together, mm -hmm. actually, um, after A Christmas Carol one night. If That's you remember, right. Which was the, the year um, that my son was Tiny Tim, and you were in A Christmas Carol. Yeah, it was the ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> yes, it was so great. <laughs> Um, so this is Krumpus, and it's got a 65% on Rotten Tomatoes. How is this? See, this is why Rotten Tomatoes means nothing I know, to me. I, I know. mean, I, I can appreciate having kind of a general idea of right. what critics might have thought, but... But critics don't know anything. Especially when it comes to horror and yeah. comedy yeah. and comedy horror yeah, in particular. Exactly. They just don't get it. This movie had a $15 million budget and ended up making $42 million at the box office. Oh, wow. And it stars one of my favorite actors, Adam Scott. Yes. He's he's wonderful. He's hilarious. He's beautiful. If I ever have a biopic done in the next five years, which I won't, I want him to play me. No, nice. <laughs> that's perfect. Well, get on that, Hollywood. <laughs> I'll watch that movie. Um, my, I remember us laughing hysterically at this in the theater. The Black Friday montage in the beginning is hilarious. It's perfect. It's <laughs> real. The juxtaposition of the music playing and it's all, you know, like, oh, Christmas. It's Christmas it's... and then everyone's fighting yeah. and then they, they go in the church and you see the, <laughs> the kids fighting <laughs> on the Christmas. Thing. Have you seen that video on YouTube? The where, Baby Jesus yes. stolen? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the little girl puts the kid in a headlock. It was like this. A sheep, um, a sheep stole baby Jesus. You need to watch that video if you haven't watched it yet. It's hilarious. It's on on the YouTube's. <laughs> but 
No, it's great. And, you know, you think about Black Friday every year. Have you done a Black Friday? Um, We accidentally went on... So my sister's wedding was on, like, Thanksgiving weekend, and we had Thanksgiving at her house, and we stayed in this hotel right across from a Walmart. Oh. And we, <laughs> we forgot, like, deodorant and toothpaste. So after... We went to Thanksgiving. We stayed really late. It was like 11.30 when we got back to the hotel. And we were like, we need to run and grab uh, toiletries. And we got there and it was completely packed. And we're like, what's going on? And it was because it was Black oh. Friday. And we didn't realize that. Yeah. So there we were, just trying to buy deodorant. And then completely surrounded by lunatics. Oh. It was fun. It's it's <laughs> crazy. And one year I accidentally went to. We're like, let's stop at Best Buy because we just needed a couple things. Nope. We left without our stuff because the yeah. line wraps around the building. It's not. The, I, I do pretty much all my Christmas shopping on the internet now. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> um, the, also, I love the setup of this, that the holiday stress is real. Because mm -hmm. this mother, played by, what's her name now? Uh, Tony Collette. I love her. She's great. Mm -hmm. And, and just like, legit, they've got legit people in this movie. You mm -hmm. know, it's good. Um, she's trying to put, make everything perfect because that's how she thinks the holiday should be. And that's real. A lot of people feel that stress yeah. and all the cooking, all the decorating, everything. And, and of course it's not really what the holiday is about, but mm -hmm. um, I love how kind of in the first half they, they set up this dynamic between the cousins between the cousins there's there's like this political divide between them where the one yeah. family is very liberal the other family is very conservative and then once that's set up they kind of like unravel that throughout yeah. the movie and when i thought it was really kind of relevant yeah. to right now it because is. the only thing missing from the other family was make america great again hats yeah. and, and if it was made, this if year, it was made today it absolutely would have been in the movie and and even though it's like a Christmas horror movie, it does have this message of family and 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 coming together and the despite their really differences. Yeah. And I, that was a really kind of nice little thing that it I is. noticed. I this family is set up so well. The cousins, <laughs> like one of the first lines, um, the twin girls walk in and they're dressed uh, like more like boys. And there's there's a running commentary about how he the, the father wishes they were sons, but. <laughs> The, the line I is, had cousins just oh, <laughs> the line is oh they're just cranky because the Steelers lost and I like that. <laughs> they're so invested in football that you know that that carries over into their mood and I know people like that and then they forgot their baby in the oh Hummer oh my god yeah. <laughs> um, the the cousins infuriate me and and I they're supposed to I wrote <laughs> I wrote these cousins make me wait yes. The girls make me believe that I could harshly judge a child to their face. Yeah, uh, right. I would be. I would not put up with any of this crap from them. Um, there's another line: "Family are people we try to get along with, even though we don't have a lot in common." Which I that like, is so accurate. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's right. It's we don't necessarily have things in common with our cousins or our siblings or whoever, but right. we still have to try to get along with them." Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people struggle. I know it's not always easy for me, but people can struggle with feeling really strongly that they should have a relationship with their family. And honestly, sometimes it's not that easy. Yeah. And um, I know for me, many years, you really have to build your own family a lot of times, yeah. depending. Anyway, that's a separate subject. But but I I agree. I think it's... I think friendships can be stronger and sometimes they have to be we have to let go of some toxic relationships right and it's it a very over. different very Christmas level <laughs> um these creepy the first creepy snowman shows up that's so scary yes and I wrote Kelly one day you're going to come home and no! find creepy snowmen <laughs> no! all over your yard <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying and that would be a legit scary thing to do to somebody if you made a snowman that was big enough to look in through somebody's window it reminded me of the movie that just came out. I think it was called The Snowman, which I yeah, was I never saw it, but <laughs> but um, you know that's a creepy concept. And when I first saw that trailer, I'm like, oh, is this going to be a horror movie? I guess it wasn't, but um, let's let's get some more creepy snowmen. Is yeah, there... that'd be cool. Like the Jack Frost. Yeah, have you seen that? I haven't. I don't think I have. It's a good one. Okay. <laughs> well, subjective. Um, okay. Subjectively, yeah. yes. <laughs> it's I, a Black Christmas, but when when the kid when they start reading his. Oh. 
list and it was really sad and then he like freaks out yeah. and starts knocking stuff over it that was me as a kid Ugh. he's <laughs> I, I was like he's such a drama queen and that was me at family events growing up like i was the sensitive one yeah well absolutely <laughs> and it's terrible these cousins are terrible mm-hmm. and the parents aren't helping like you know the the bad kids parents Right, they're uh, just kind of like, what's the problem? Stop being such a snowflake. Yeah. Go back to your safe space. Exactly, and <laughs> and the the uncle, he's like does, making fun of the food and making fun of everything. It's just, it's the worst. It is the worst. And then there's that other son of theirs that just oh, like sits there and yeah. eats the whole time. Like, huh? <laughs> yeah. I love that kid. Um, the food in this movie really kind of made me hungry all the time. Oh, like everything yeah. looks delicious. Yeah. Um, and Did then you hear that Tony Collette, we would have appreciated. Your yes, writing. I absolutely would have. I laughed in the theater, and I laughed watching it this time because everybody's freaking out about this blizzard. And honestly, like I'm like, this doesn't look that different no. from a Christmas here. Yeah, like really, really, there are years where it's exactly like that. Now the only um, thing that would be the worst is if the power was out because we would yes. have internet, and that's my lifeline. <laughs> I didn't realize until, I, was it this past summer or two summers ago now? When the power was out yeah. for like a couple hours? Well, it was out for a week for some reason. Oh, that's right. Out, but, out, out. but only a couple hours for us, Same and with you, us and you. And my four-year-old, I guess she was three then, she's like, well, let's just watch YouTube. Well, we can't. You know? well, okay, well, then Hulu. Well, then Amazon. Like, okay, then Netflix. Like, she would just go through all the streaming services, and it's like, no, we That's can't hilarious. watch anything on the TV. There's we, no electricity. When that happened to us, all of our roommates, like, well, I mean, there's five of us living here. We, we hung out in the living room with our, like, 3DSs and played. It was, like, the one time we've ever all played together, and then <laughs> we started to run out of batteries, and it was like, God, if the power doesn't go back on, we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, power is, uh, that is the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, so Krumpus uh, lures this little, the boy, um, the one who's just eating all the time, with a gingerbread cookie. What would he lure you with? Oh, that's a good question. Um, what would be on a, a string that, and it would pull it and you would follow? <laughs> the, like a molasses ginger cookie. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are my absolute favorites. So, I mean, and it's quite possible I would have gone after the gingerbread man, too. It would be really easy to get me up that chimney because there's not a lot of food that I'd be like, no. But what if it wasn't food? What if it was something else? Uh, like, if he had Adam Scott on a string, I would follow. But um, <laughs> if, like, some some physical object or hmm. what do you really want for Christmas, I guess? <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Okay. I bet I'll think of, I'll, I'll find something. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't think of like a physical thing that I want. I mean, except for like Adam Scott. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, um, I, I like the animation for telling the Crumps uh, backstory. Did mm, you yes. appreciate that? Yes, and I love the grandmother's oh, grandma. character. Spooky German grandma reminded me of spooky German guy in Monster Squad, mm. and I feel like they would make a great couple. Oh, yeah, um, but yes, the animation was such a good throwback to like the animated... You know, it's funny. I also recently watched Harold and Kumar's 3D Christmas, oh. and they do a similar thing, oh, okay. only they're like tripping on acid or something. Okay. But <laughs> but yeah, it's it was a neat little throwback. And then... Just knowing her story ahead of time, like, going back and watching and seeing her subtle reactions to things as it oh, builds. Yes. Was... Because, you know, we know that she's the little girl that survives. Mm-hmm. And then knowing um, this story. And I and I love that choice of animation because I thought it was really effective. And like you said, it, it feels like Frosty the Snowman or uh, Rudolph. Yeah. The Island of Misfit Toys, yes. et cetera. Um, yes. <laughs> Speaking of spoilers, though, knowing how this movie ends, do you feel like it's all for naught? Like, this whole thing? Do you just feel like they're... Well, you know, I thought about that, too. I think for them, it kind of becomes... I mean, there's no escape. And that is... That last scene with the grandmother, like, toward the end, really kind of drove that home. Like, when that scene happens, you're like, okay, these people, there's no way they're going to escape. Um, I think it's a good cautionary tale for the audience, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's and, kind of sucks they, for them. I guess they learn through that whole journey too. And right. And then we don't know exactly what, what being where they are at the end entails. Like, are right. they forever going to be living that Christmas happily? Yeah. But like trapped in that one day that was, um, 
So this movie is made by the same people who brought us Trick or Treat, which is one of my favorites. And I like that both movies are about sort of the spirit of the holiday. In that movie, it's um, Jack. Wait, Sam, the little monster guy. And then in this movie, it's Krampus. And they're both sort of the spirits of the holiday, quote, that expect you to follow their rules. And if you don't, you're screwed. And that was a theme in both that I thought was really... Oh, yeah. Interesting. And then in this movie also, I do think it's worth pointing out that the it really doesn't follow Krampus, like the real Krampus mythology or what oh, you would okay. call it. What, tell us what that is if you know of him. Well, um, my understanding is that he is just like Santa's evil helper, which I mean he is in this movie too. But in this movie they made him sort of like the leader of this like all these, you know, the evil toys and the, the like, terrifying Satan elves at yes. the end, which was incredibly, like, there were lots of times in this movie where I was like, how is this PG-13? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, in the in the regular Krampus story, I think he's more of just, like, an assistant to Santa. and does he'll, he punish naughty children? He does punish kids. Them. He, like, hits them with sticks and stuff. But I don't <laughs> think he necessarily drags, drags them and their entire families to hell, right? <laughs> like... I mean, I've seen stuff with Krampus putting kids in, like, burlap bags yeah. and stuff. But otherwise, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, it's um, so good. I want, I want, immediately when we left the theater, I googled, I wanted that ornament from the movie. Yes, you can. But they, I couldn't find it then, but maybe it's out now. Well, they had, you could buy one from Wida's website, and I don't know if they still sell them, but oh, okay. they did, they did officially make some. I oh, don't know cool. what's going on anymore. Um, can I just talk about the aunt? Yes. So she was a lot like Mrs. Mack in the other movie, like even down to getting drunk all the time and just being crabby, but I loved her. She She's... held together a lot of the movie in the best way, like again, inserting that extra comedy when she yeah. teaches the kids how to make peppermint. <laughs> oh, yeah, wait, not schnapps. Um... Something with alcohol, but she's, like, going to leave the alcohol out of theirs, maybe. Right, but then she puts it in <laughs> and, like, gives it to the kids yeah. secretly. Um, and, at, yeah, as the movie progresses, these caricatures of the political ideologies or whatever become more nuanced. And I yeah. really love that. And, the, like, the things where they... Another favorite thing of mine is just the sets and the look of the movie. When they go out and you can feel that it's no one is around and it's yeah. so isolated and and stylized just enough that it feels like a dream right and like when they go in that house and they find the um the cookie guy like Stabbed. knifed to the yeah. fridge <laughs> um yeah that's it's all really effective and i was thinking even the the daughter walking the couple of blocks mm -hmm. to her boyfriend's house and she can't see, and then she's hiding under the... The, the DHL van. Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, yeah. yes, it was the delivery. Because the DHL guy showed up at the beginning. Yes. They can't be stopped, even by Christmas demons. Oh, it's all it's all really well done and creepy. Yeah. And then including the baby up to oh, the stakes gosh, quite yes. a lot. Um, when the grandmother speaks English and the aunt's in the corner, and she's like, I knew it! You can speak English! Yeah. I just... I, <laughs> that stuff makes me happy. And, and the uncle having all the guns and... Um, <laughs> his fan. What did he say? He's like, you brought guns to Christmas, and his answer was something great. I can't remember. You gotta protect your flock. I don't think that oh, was yeah. the answer there. Oh, that might have been it. A couple other little random trivia tidbits. At the very beginning, when they show the town from above, you can apparently find lots of different horror <gasps> movie houses. Yes. And the one that I noticed, like the only one, I didn't pause it and look, but I. I there are lots of Easter eggs like that in this movie, from what I've read. But the Amityville Horror House can be seen from above. And if you pay attention, it's actually the house they live right next door to. Oh they show gosh. it several times, like, across the yard. It's the Amityville House. Oh, that's so cool. And I thought that was really neat, because that nice. that's one of those franchises I'm weirdly into. Yeah. Um, and then, just in general, the, the, the fact that this movie ma managed to get a PG-13... Like, I know one of the reasons the PG-13 rating exists is because of Gremlins, and I feel like that movie can be compared with this movie a lot. They're both Christmas movies, and especially the scenes, like, with the mother 
going into the kitchen and the do you right. hear what I hear that stuff reminded this movie reminded me of that but um like they use the f word once which you're allowed to do in pg-13 but one of the rules of that is it's not it can't have anything to do with sex and i thought it was interesting because toward the end when the aunt's like we're fucked and then they're like how do you know and she's like because i'm old enough to know when life is coming at you with its pants down i was like that (laughs) seems like a pretty loose way (laughs) to get around around that rule and there were a couple other places like when the sister hiding under the van that's like the intensity even compared to something like the conjuring which is rated at r i felt like this movie deserved that as much as the other one right. um and they they cut off the uncle when he is about to shoot the gingerbread men and he's like merry christmas mother and then it just cuts off right that the rating just surprised yeah. me yeah i i don't have a problem with it i think right. it's great and i'm sure the audience was bigger but it's just silly I guess. <laughs> it is. Um, I started writing in my notes. I started referring to the aunt as Auntie Nate. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> you're, again, your spirit animal. I know. Her final <laughs> scene when she comes out with the shotgun and blows the evil teddy bear away <laughs> and then gets dragged off and she's like, see you all in hell. I love like, that. she knows what's <laughs> going on. Yeah. She's like, we're all freaking going yeah. to hell. <laughs> it was, yeah, she's great. And then at the end when they all wait, you know, the beautiful Christmas morning portion and they give the mother the really ugly taxidermy <laughs> and everybody gets their presents and then he gets that bell and everyone kind of looks at each other. And I'm curious to know your feelings on the ending. I feel like they're they're trapped in there forever and it's not going to be pleasant. Maybe they're not going to be tortured, but they can't leave. Right, they can't leave. Do you they're think it'll just time. stay Christmas? I, I did notice... As the camera was pulling out, they're all kind of frozen, and it made me wonder if, oh. if may like I think it could be said that they had their beautiful Christmas morning. They woke up, and then when he gets the Krampus bell, they all kind of stare at it, and they know, like they remember it like a oh, nightmare. Yeah. But then as the camera's pulling out, nobody's moving; they're all still staring. And I, I, I like to think that they're trapped in that moment of realizing oh, for all eternity. Yeah. But I don't, you know, that's just yeah. me. Well, and I and I feel like you know, right as soon as the power goes out that ne- that next day, mm-hmm. it's they're already in the in the snow globe because no one else is there at that point. But yet could, that yeah. delivery guy comes, so and there's like, no escape. Well, DHL, you can't stop them. Yeah, okay, that's what it is. <laughs> that you just can't. <laughs> And I mean, he does eventually, like, who knows what happened to that guy. Yeah, maybe just... that is Krampus in disguise. Maybe Krampus <laughs> is the Jill guy. Yes. I will say this movie also, I feel, is kind of the perfect Christmas movie. This one, so I love Black Christmas for what it does, but this movie I love so much because for, as far as I'm concerned, every single thing about this movie is wonderful. I love the effects. I love the monster designs. I like... There are so many more monsters than just Krampus. The sets and the actors, like the casting is perfect. I just, across the board, love it. So, How many days of Christmas are you giving it? What I did, (laughs) I did some math. Oh, okay. I gave it all 12 days of Christmas. So all the way from 12 drummers drumming, all the way down to a partridge in a pear tree for all 12 days. So that comes to 364 gifts, if you do the math. In the song. So this movie gets 364 presents across 12 days. Nice. I love it that much. That's that's amazing. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> I'm giving it 11... What's 11 again? 11 mm-hmm. Piper's Piping. Piper's Piping. I be, and, and the only reason I hesitate giving it 12, just like you had your caveat until the last movie, is because it's so new. I feel like, do I love it so much now and I won't in two years? I probably will. But... I'm going to hold off on the 12th. That's fair. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Yeah, I would say I think it will go down as as kind of a new Christmas classic. At least it deserves to. I would, yeah. I would say it, as far as this type of movie, it's right up there with Gremlins. Yeah. I I like this better than Gremlins. So yeah, personally, yeah. don't yeah, don't at me. No, yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, we, Campbell and I rewatched both Gremlins. And, I mean, he, coming from... A ten-year-old now perspective, he thought they were ridiculous. Like, really? Yeah. I mean, and he didn't dislike them, but he was just like, "What?" And then there's the Donald Trump character in the second one. It you know, I don't think Donald I've Trump. ever seen the second oh, okay. one. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to you watch. You better add him oh, now. No. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen the only thing I remember is the lady gremlin at the mall or something oh, okay. with all the makeup. Yeah. 
that is that, that's quintessential. I'll have to check it out. But it's oh, it's it's hard to watch because it's very Trumpian. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Merry Hooray, Christmas. Man. Well, this is airing um, post Christmas, so we hope that you had a wonderful holiday. And we hope that you have a happy new year. Oh, and a shout out to Mark because it's his birthday today, the 28th of December. Excellent. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mark. We still need to get together with him and play Friday the 13th. Yes. Oh, and did you update your... We did. It's so fun. You can be Shelly now. That's awesome. (laughs) So until next time, we'll see you in the horror section.